One of the most common questions I get, whether it's in private lessons or at a music camp or online, is how do I play up to speed with my jam session, my favorite recordings, my band? How do I play fast? What is the secret to speed for Clawhammer banjo? I approach this from a multitude of different angles and I'm going to start that process with you today. I'm going to show you a simple exercise that you can do right away. But first, let's talk about what speed is, how to get better at it, and why it's important today on Banjo Quest. All right, before we get into the actual exercise, let's define our terms. Let's talk about how fast is fast. Let's talk about what speed is and why it's important. But I need to get something out of the way right off the top. We're never playing for speed's sake alone. We're using it as a musical choice. Why are these old bands so fast? In my opinion, they're fast because they're trying to get these dancers cooking. They're trying to get people on their feet in a dance situation. And so that speed is exciting and it gets the blood flowing. So that is a musical choice that these folks have made, whether it's on recordings or modern string bands or li anything live that you hear, those fast tempos are really dance tempos. So aside from a dance setting, why is speed important? Maybe you just wanna play slowly. Maybe you like a slower style and that's fine, that's great. But I would argue that learning how to play fast will impact your slow style in a really positive way. One thing that speed forces you to do is it forces you to use simple lines going in and out of the instrument. So especially for the right hand, I can't play fast if there's a problem with my right hand. If my right hand mechanics aren't dialed in to the most simple path in and out of the instrument, I will not be able to play fast. So it's a, almost a diagnostic tool. If you've got cracks in the foundation of your mechanics, playing fast will surely expose them so you can go back and fix them. There's a funny thing that happens when you are learning to play fast. As you're playing slow, your motions are big. I'm in double C tuning if you wanna play along. Your motions are big. As you get faster, your motions have to get very streamlined and your, your hand has to be soft. You have to give way to the speed. You have to force an adaptation in the way you are mechanically interacting with the instrument. So if you, all you do is play slow and big, you're never going to force that adaptation of that small, relaxed, fast motion that is necessary for playing at speed. And this small relaxed motion is good for your slow playing. It's not only good for your fast playing. Being relaxed on the instrument to me is the ultimate goal. Speed is merely a step to get to that relaxation. Another reason why speed is really important, and this is gonna sound a little bit funny, is that speed can be really musical. I, I love to tell this to my students, speed is your friend. If I take a simple pattern, let me just play you a simple pattern. I'm gonna play it slowly, and then I'm going to demonstrate the same pattern played fast. Simple alternate string pull-off pattern. Now listen to the same pattern played fast. The nice thing about playing up to speed is, look, we've got problems as banjo players. We've got rapidly decaying notes. And if all of your playing is really slow, those rapidly decaying notes create gaps between them because they just disappear. It's not like an electric guitar. It's not like a violin. We, it's not like a human voice. We've got these limits, this automatic limit to how long we can sustain a note on the banjo. It's notorious for this. And if we're playing at a reasonable tempo comfortably, it means that our notes are touching, which gives an overall smoothing effect to our overall sound. And you can hear that right away. The notes are dovetailing nicely together at my faster tempo, and it sounds sweeter and more musical than that sort of slow tempo where you can start to hear the gaps between the notes. So you might be surprised that you can take some very simple patterns and simply by playing them a little bit faster, you can make them sound more musical. 
Okay, so before I show you some practical ways to raise your speed, let's talk about what speed is. How fast is fast? Well, let me give you a caveat right off the bat, and this may sound like a cop-out, but I really think this is important. Everybody's speed cap is going to be different. So any number that you find out there, or if you track down your favorite recording and you, you tempo tap it and you find out how fast it is, and you're dismayed by how much faster that player is than you, you've got to just shelf that. you got to put it away. You can't do the judgment thing. There's always going to be somebody who can play faster than you, no matter how fast you get. So don't even go down that road. The most important number that you can come up with, that you can derive, is not something I can give you. It's your speed cap. It's the number at which your playing starts to break down. I'm going to show you how to find that number today, later on in the video. But let's, let's put that aside, and we do have to have some external reference. External reference is necessary for us to find out where we stand and where we want to get. It will help you shape your goals. So my favorite reference album, I'm going to give you an entire album to check out as a speed reference, and that is the Camp Creek Boys album. So go check that out if you don't know it. It is a Desert Island album of mine and for many, many other people over the years. So check that out. On this album, which is really a profile of a dance band, the tempos range from between 120 and about 140, maybe a little less than 140 beats per minute. So to give you an idea, uh, let me give you 120 now. We're going analog today. So this is 120. And 140 it starts getting pretty fast. Uh, this doesn't have a 140. This has a 138. Let's let's go with that. Feels a little. That tempo is a little bit brighter than 120. So that's a nice little reference to have because that album is sort of a gold standard for string band and dance tempo. It also is. Uh, probably want some of the faster tempos that you're going to find in a jam setting. Now there are lots of jams that are way slower than that. So I think if you can play up to speed with the Camp Creek Boys, there are going to be very few musical situations with Clawhammer that you're going to feel outgunned in terms of just raw tempo. All right, so to begin working on your speed, the first thing you need to do is you need to find out what your speed cap is. Let me show you how I would do that. I'm gonna start at 132. I've already done this a million times for myself. This is 132. Uh, so let's find out where I break. Simple double thumbing pattern. Don't do anything else. You don't need to do anything else. Simple double thumbing pattern. That's 132. Let's go to... Uh, Boy, this really jumps up to 144. Ah, not bad. All right, let's go to 152. That's pretty much it. So let's just say my speed limit for now for double thumbing, for sustained double thumbing is 150, 152. I wasn't in love with my sound at 152. My fifth string really started to drop off. Watch out for the fifth string. That is usually the first thing to go in this kind of speed test. So uh, you wanna make sure that you're listening. Once that fifth string really starts to drop off, it means you've reached your cap. Stop there, write the number down. That's your number. So one thing to really keep in mind here, don't be alarmed if your number is low. 152, that's my max for double thumbing, for sustained double thumbing, that's actually not very fast. I can play way faster than that if I offload some of the work. It's just that the double thumbing pattern is extremely demanding if you're keeping that fist string alive the whole time, if you're really disciplined and doing a good double thumbing pattern. You're going to find that your speed cap for double thumbing is earlier than you would expect and it may be way slower than you can actually play a tune. So that's really interesting. If I were to show you an alternate string pull-off pattern, I could get it much, much faster than 152 because I'm offloading some of the work of that eighth note pattern 
to my left hand. So don't be alarmed if your speed cap feels very early with this double thumbing pattern. One of the reasons why the double thumbing pattern is so effective at raising your speed cap is because you have to work so hard to get this thing going and to keep it sustained. Now, let's talk about how to raise the cap. So of course, one of the first things you could do to raise your speed cap is to simply play it at faster and faster tempos, keeping track every day, going one or two BPM more each day. But I like to think of different ways to, to solve this problem. That is one way to start increasing your speed cap. But another way that I've recently discovered is what I call bursting. And it's borrowed from athletics, and it's also borrowed from the drumming world, where we sprint for short time, and then we fall back on a slower tempo, a light jog. So it's like interval training for musicians. And here's how it works. We use the grid that's produced by the metronome, and we focus on it at different resolutions within a single practice session. Let me show you what that means. That probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's the way I like to think about it. There are multiple ways to interpret this click, and I'm gonna show you two right now. The first thing we gotta do is we gotta link up with this click, and we're going to do a downstroke for every click. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four. Now we're gonna double our motion with that click. The click does not change, it stays at 100 BPM. We're just changing the resolution at which we're interacting with that click. So here's that finer resolution. One, two, three, four. That may feel really fast to you, that's okay. This is just to illustrate. Here we go. I'm going to show you how I burst train. Ready? One, two, three, four. So don't worry if that's really fast for you or really slow. You're going to have to find your own tempo to start this training, this burst training. Now one of the added benefits of burst training is it changes the way your inner clock works. It's going to refine your sense of time. So you can start to hear the subdivisions without playing. I can hear the quarter notes, one, two, three, four. I can hear the eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I can hear 16th notes. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. There are ways to subdivide this with your mind, with your voice, with your banjo that are sort of implied in the click. They're not being counted by this little device, but you can subdivide them yourself. That's going to enrich your sense of time and the way that you interact with any pulse that you play with. So the other benefit of working like this, changing your relationship to that click, is that it has real world musical use. This isn't just for increasing your speed cap, but getting used to flip flopping on that resolution can be very musical. Take a player like Kyle Creed, one of my all time favorites. He would play a phrase like this. So you get that. That change in resolution and it is really musical and really beautiful. All right, that does it today for burst training and speed cap raising. Of course, we will be going into much more depth over on Patreon, so if you're really interested in increasing your facility at speed, I highly recommend you check out Patreon. There will be tablature downloads, lots of exclusive videos, and of course, we will start a speed journal there. I'll show you how to do that over on Patreon. But don't worry, there will be more free content coming specifically tied into burst training this month on Banjo Quest. So uh, for those of you who aren't interested in the Patreon experience, the full Banjo Quest experience, 
That's okay, there will be plenty of content for everybody here on the channel. So I hope you do well with this. Let me know how you do. I'm curious how this goes for you, and I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.